Got Bev tricky on man, like he play defense. He don't guard. Yeah, I mean that's a bad, bad shot. Um, care what anybody says, that's a bad shot. Lemon Pepper Lou, part of his. Got Bev tricky on man, like he play defense. He don't guard nobody. Okay. We're actually Magic City came up with. Uh, but right when they put pressure on us, um, you know, honestly, I just thought we didn't come through. Right, guys so for this video look i had something completely different planned for this day like i am sitting on two videos that i am not going to be releasing yet because i really want to get this like off of my mind now obviously you guys know on this channel i do nba videos 2k videos everything basketball and really just sports news in general and looking at what happened last night with the clippers like it's not good like it's not a good team and i really think that this team has a really really dark future so if you guys enjoy this video and want to see more videos like this make sure to go ahead and drop a like share the video and go ahead and subscribe as well because i can't cap man the clippers future is looking pretty dark so pretty much i'm going to be breaking this thing down in the past the present and the future and this won't even be all that long of a video it's really just a brief synopsis of every single stage of this clipper team and why the future of this team is just not looking all that good so first off let's start off with the past of the clippers franchise because i mean for the most part they've been a laughing stock of a franchise i mean they've really been the lakers little brother and not in a good way like this team has been in the staples center they've been looking crazy for like decades and decades and decades they have blown multiple 3-1 leads doc rivers 2015 against the houston rockets and i really got to start to say man this is a, like if anyone other than denver won last night it's james harden in the rockets because this really just shows how hard it is to actually make the western conference finals and harden did it twice well looking at the clippers like i said it last night these dudes need to get out of los angeles or something because i feel like this team is really really cursed but like i said laughing stock franchise they also had donald sterling as well this franchise as a whole has taken l's and l's and l's blake griffin injured chris paul injured every single big game all of their franchise stars injured drafting players like michael olua candy a bunch of busts in this team's history and you know a few seasons ago they actually started to become a really decent team after that chris paul trade because i mean they added depth they pretty much traded chris paul any sign and trade and they got back pat bev lou will and shreds three players who actually became really integral to this team's development as a whole and really helped this team out and you know last season they drafted shea like that was a massive w as well before that draft, I pretty much said that Shea was really underrated and that he was going to be the steal of the draft. And, you know, they brought in Jerry West. They drafted Shea and Jerome Robinson, which was an L because they honestly could have had Shea and Michael Porter Jr., which I thought they were going to do that. But this team was actually looking really, really decent. And it really started to look like all they needed was that true superstar level player to take them to the next side because they had cap room. They had a deep, deep, deep roster, and they had Doc Rivers. So to finish up the past, you know, Doc Rivers is the only coach in NBA history to blow multiple 3-1 leads. At this time in the past, he's only done it twice. So moving on to the present. Yeah, this team just blew another 3-1 lead last night to a young team with very little playoff experience. I mean, you look at this roster with Jokic, with Jamal Murray literally came into his own during this bubble. Porter was coming off of the bench. They got, like, this is a really, really young team. And they came out there and, and they smacked y'all. Like, like, this Clipper team, I thought they were going to wrap it up on Sunday, bro. Like, Sunday, first of all, we're watching football. We, we Like, we're not watching basketball because we expect the Clippers to blow these guys out. And the Clippers were, at one point, I think that they were up like 15 plus points. Come back a few minutes later on, on commercial break, the Clippers are down by 10. Huh? Like, that is really embarrassing. Like, they should have wrapped this series up a long time ago. And to go up 3-1, there was just no excuses. And to literally hear these guys say that this year wasn't a championship year by, by Paul George to me is ridiculous. Because you guys went out of your way to sign every single free agent y'all could have. Reggie Jackson, Morris, 
You guys got Joakim Noah. Even try to get Darren Collison as well when you guys didn't need him. Talking all that mess. PG, Bev, Trez, Morris being dirty as hell against Dallas. To lose to this team is a massive L. And then I hear Doc Rivers say that it's fatigue when there's no travel. And the Nuggets just came back from two 3-1 leads is insane to me. And Kawhi scoring two points in the second half. And him and PG combining for zero in the fourth quarter. I'm going to keep it a band with y'all. This team should have lost to Dallas. I mean, Kristaps got hurt, but whenever he was playing, they they were going to win. Like, it looked like they were going to win. I mean, in game number one, the Mavs lose, but that's after Kristaps gets out of the game. Ever he was in the game, is looking totally, totally different. And let's be honest, this team also struggled during the regular season. We let it slide because, you know, we were saying that they were just building up chemistry. They were And they were just starting to actually mesh well. And look, right now it's not looking good for this team at all because Kawhi Leonard, it looks like he has chronic knee problems now. Like, he's getting injured more. At this moment, yo, Paul George is just washed. He has a 2021 player option and he's definitely going to accept that 38 million dollars and Kawhi is probably going to stay too because this is a team that he always wanted to actually be on and he's getting 36 million dollars with his player option in 2021 as well let's talk about the future of this team because like I just said PG is washed both of them have player options and both of them are just injury prone in general I don't want to be harsh here but I really feel like the Clippers are going to be fading back into irrelevancy and I know that Clippers fans are going to be really mad about me saying that, but this team really has nothing going for it because, I mean, you can't trade Paul George. His, his trade value is at the worst it's ever been, and no one is taking his, his contract with a player option after next year for $38 million. I got to be honest, man. This is the first time Kawhi has really had any pressure. I mean, I made a video a few months ago saying how Kawhi was the most intriguing player, and that video got backlash because I kind of said that Kawhi was a little lucky. And I know that that still sounds crazy because, yeah, it's just one series, but for most of Kawhi's career, like, people were getting ready to, to say that if he won this year's ring, don't think that I forgot. Some of y'all said that he was going to be up there with Kobe Bryant. Some of y'all said that he'd be better than, than Kevin Durant and Stephen Curry all time. And to me, that, that's a little ridiculous for a guy with only four all-star appearances. To me, that is actually insane. And for most of his career, he had no pressure at all. Like, let's be honest. The, the Spurs, he didn't lead that team to that championship. He didn't. Toronto, Toronto was already a good team before him. And let's be honest. They weren't expected to do anything. Like they like they were not expected to actually win that title. He had that really lucky shot against Philly and Kyle Lowry, who we all know is is a really good closer as well. Like this is the first time Kawhi actually had the pressure of actually being that closer on the best team and that best player. And he folded. He folded. Let's think about this man. Steve Ballmer just bought the form for four hundred million dollars from James Dolan the Clippers are really down bad right now like they are down bad to like I've never seen this before I mean let's think about who they gave up they gave up Shea I think that he's good enough to be a really good number two on a championship level team giving him up he's 22 I would take him over Paul George right now they also gave up Danilo Gallinari and they pretty much control the Clippers next seven years including five draft picks and I think about two swaps. Yeah, the Clippers are toast. And the best thing for me to actually do is look, looking at trades, we got to look back at the time if we want to call this a bad trade. And during this time last summer, it was kind of a bad trade then as well. I mean, yeah, Paul George did finish top three in MVP voting. However, he just folded against the Blazers and he was coming off of another injury for his shoulder. Like he just had multiple seasons of getting injured and he just had another shoulder injury where Buddy literally said that he could barely raise his arm. That is a massive concern, but I get it. 
you don't get Kawhi. But honestly, if you guys gave up three draft picks and maybe one or two swaps, I would maybe say, okay, this was a okay, ki kind of like an okay-ish trade. But letting them control seven years of your future is an L because, yeah, draft picks are massive gambles. But giving them this much power over your franchise for that long, it's an L. And if the Clippers won, I mean, we could say that this was low-key worth it, but now it looks like they won't even get that chance to. The future of the Clippers is very, very dark, and we were really hyping up this LA rivalry, and I'm pretty sure every basketball fan wanted this to actually happen. But look, this is where we are right now. And the last thing that I really got to say about this franchise is sheesh, maybe that curse is real. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to go ahead and drop a like on it. Go ahead, subscribe, and comment W if you made it throughout the entire video so I know who the real ones are. And if you guys actually want me to talk about the bright future of the Thunder, let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm going to keep on grinding, man, especially the next few days. The next episode of the Wolf series is already done. I also have another rebuild done as well to actually drop those. But look, but other than that, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace, y'all.